Hello from Tbilisi, from the second day of the Women's Grand Prix here in Georgia. And I'm joined today by Emil Sotovsky, the CEO of FIDE, who came to this event. Emil, welcome. How are things looking to you here in Tbilisi so far? Hi, Milan. I think things are looking great. The event is spectacular, and uh, I think all the participants also, also enjoy it. And uh, for us as FIDE, it was very important to start this series also on a high note. And, uh, we believe the entire series would be according to the high standard. The place where we were playing, the Biltmore Hotel, is, is a, one of the most luxurious hotels here, but the very place we're having this interview is where Ding Liren and Aronian played the finals of the World Cup. So, uh, Georgia is obviously in Pilisi, a place with a lot of chess history. Was it deliberate that you decided to have the first leg of the Grand Prix, of the Women's Grand Prix here, given the legacy in women's chess and chess in general? Yeah, I think it was very symbolical that Georgia starts this uh, series. This, this uh, year, 24-25, it will be six events throughout the year, starting uh, this one in, in August and terminating in, in June 2025. And uh, of course, Georgia is a landmark for, for women's chess, and we are very happy to greet all the great champions here, uh, and Nolega Prindashvili, Maja Ciburdunidze. Uh, and um, I think it's very important that we are not only sticking to the tradition, but developing and, and, and increasing and improving all the, the way uh, these events are organized, because uh, I think it's very important for, for, for women players to have this series. Uh, not many round-robin events for, for women players there are. Uh, luckily, in recent years, Cairns Cup and Norway Chess join us. And, uh, I know that both events are a huge success, but these are basically only two. Sometimes there are events in China for the, for the top players as well. But uh, it is FIDE Circle, FIDE uh, Grand Prix events that allows players also to be in a competitive mode yeah, to and also to qualify for the candidates. And how, what's the biggest challenge in, in, uh, for women's chess? Because it's obviously a specific category. What's the biggest challenge in getting more events and, and getting it more developed? Well, I think, uh, as always, you need passionate people behind it to move things and not only to talk, because there's a lot of talk about supporting women's chess, women's sports, uh, raising funds, but uh, as we learn firsthand, I mean, it's not exactly that words are always come also with additional Please. effort. Yes, and uh, I'm happy that uh, we, we, we managed to team up with organizers in six countries to, to come up with this series. And it's, it's actually quite massive. The total price fund of the series is 600,000 euro. And the total budget is, uh, is about 2 million euro. So that's, uh, that's meaningful effort and uh, I'm really, really happy we managed to pull it. And it's important for players, for top players, but also for aspiring players, because there are several younger players who, who got Get now the chance. chance to participate. And it also creates an incentive, because for many women players, the challenge is that as they reach certain level, very high level, sometimes 2400 level, which is a very strong player already, but they don't see a future as a professional player. And by creating these opportunities, we allow them to, to build on their career to improve not only Grand Prix series, of course, you know, we have also uh, the Grand Swiss, Women Grand Swiss, uh, Women World Cup, and all that uh, contributes to the entire professional approach for, for those who are in chess and who only start uh, their, their career. Upwards, yeah. Yeah. Right. But you have other events on your plate as well as the CEO of FIDE. You have the uh, match for the world title coming soon in, in Singapore. And obviously, there's the World Rapid and Blitz uh, this December in New York. So how are things going in preparation for these events? Yeah, this, this year is, is just full of events. We, we, have, uh, we have just Olympiads starting in a month. Yes, the Olympiads uh, yes. are That's the main, <laughs> main event. Right? Yes, and, and also the, the World Championship match in Singapore and uh, World Rapid and Blitz in New York. And uh, it all requires a lot of work, a lot of preparation. And uh, I'm happy that it goes smoothly. We team up not only with a strong team of organizers, but also with a very prominent partners and sponsors. And uh, the moment we will share the, the names, I think everybody would be delighted, delighted for chess, uh, because it would be a major breakthrough, in my opinion. Uh, 
and what to say for us for me personally the challenge is now to take chess up to have a, some sort of a breakthrough to, to be a mainstream sport because what happens today we have probably most players most competitive players uh, compared to, to other sports I mean so many rated players so many players online I mean chess is is played all over the place but when uh, the time comes for, to, for a breakthrough to be a mainstream sport, to be on TV, to be on networks, to be sponsored by, by big companies, we haven't been very successful with that and that's, that's the aim. And, uh, Why do you think you've not been successful? It's a long topic, it's a combination you know it's a of fa factors and maybe we should have a separate uh, talk about, about that. We will. But uh, it is my aim basically to change the situation. And uh, if I have any sorts of KPI to myself as, as, as CEO of FIDE is not to gradually improve, which we have been doing quite steadily and quite successfully all these years, but to have one major breakthrough which would elevate chess to a different sort of uh, category than we are now. We're still a bit of a niche sport. I think we deserve and we can be, become a mainstream sport. Well, just to speak to that, I just looked at a very recent study on sports and 16% of people in the UK and I think a similar percentage in the US think that chess should be an Olympic sport. So not a lot of support there, but would FIDE like to get chess into the Olympics? Obviously you're recognized by the IOC, so are those ambitions there on the table as well? So. Uh, they are on the table all the time. We have been talking, even submitting some papers towards LA Olympiad, but it didn't work. Uh, so uh, it is a long process, very difficult process. And uh, I wouldn't say it's critical for chess to be there because uh, to being in Olympics there would be a price because today chess Olympiad is something unique. You have 200 countries, you have players from all over the world, you have uh, so many participants and if we were to be included in, in general Olympics it would not be like that. It would be something shorter, smaller. So there are pros and cons but I think uh, anyways we should strive getting there. But I do not think that it's the only way chess can become a mainstream sport. I think we have other ways to, to do so. And uh, I think it's also connected to how popular chess is, how many people f start following it, be it a uh, world championship match, be it faster competitions, because we have an advantage of having several formats, very different formats, classical format and rapid, rapid format and blitz. And blitz. They are for different audiences sometimes. And uh, I think we can uh, leverage on that. And uh, it is my expectation that with the next big events, in particular in Singapore and New York, uh, will be successful to, to have a significant breakthrough. And finally, as the CEO I, I noticed once you had a book with you about how to become a better CEO or how a CEO thinks. So uh, as, uh, how has chess helped you become a better CEO? And how difficult is this job of being a CEO of an organization such as FIDE? Well, that's, that's another, I think, separate topic because uh, <laughs> uh, I can't probably fit it in, into a 30 seconds reply. Uh, but the one thing for sure, I, I always try to, to analyze what I'm doing right and wh where can I improve and, and what should be done. And I think the preparation, in general preparation for negotiations or preparation for yourself or attention to detail, these things are uh, some things that any serious grandmaster would know how to how to tackle and I think it's very useful in my career and also decision taking uh, distributing your time all these are uh, you know players uh, strong players they, they know how to deal it uh, to deal with it and uh, probably the most important features that you always have to keep improving that's how it was in chess when I was a professional player and that's how it is now when I'm a CEO of FIDE. Perfect. Well, thank you very much and good luck with your work. Thank you. Thank you for